Hello. Okay. Next tutorial. Right. Um, hopefully you guys can tell what this is, and I'm hoping it isn't the wig that gives it away. <laughs> but this is my own personal take on the Bride of Frankenstein, or the Frankenstein, or both. Depends on how you look at it, really. Um, I actually got a request from um, is it Candice or Candice. I'll put your name there. So thank you so much for the request. Um, she requested that I do you know, like Frankenstein or the Bride of Frankenstein or both. So I thought, well. Frankenstein's been done a lot on YouTube, and some people have done some amazing things with it, and I just don't think that I need to do one, really. I mean, I can do it if you guys want to see it, but, I mean, everyone's made such amazing goes of it, and, yeah, I just don't think I should, really. <laughs> but, um, so I thought I'd do The Bride of Frankenstein. And then I thought, I mean, there's the 1935 version that let everyone knows with the eyebrow, that's what this part is, and the wig and the lips. But I thought that's not really, there's not enough makeup there for me. I mean, it's too cosmetic, I wanted something big. So I thought, okay, I'll take some inspiration from the Helena Bonham Carter version, um, which is an amazing makeup. But again, in itself, there's not a massive amount going on. There's, that's where the scars come from, and the neck and everything. But it needed something else, so I just mixed the two together, and I took some inspiration from the, from the 1955 version, 1957? Oh, that's terrible, I can't remember these dates. The 1957, it is, yeah, uh, version. I think it was like a stage version or something like that, or a TV version. Anyway, so I took all of that and just blended it together, and this is what I came out with. Yeah, so it's got elements of all the Frankenstein movies and The Bride of Frankenstein, and yeah. So I hope it's okay that I did that, and I hope I did it justice for you guys. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's quite gory. I mean, I, I basically, as it's getting closer and closer to Halloween now, I thought it's best, I better start making some darker, scarier-looking tutorials. So I thought I'd introduce some blood, or do it, gra do it gradually. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can consider this my first Halloween tutorial if you like, guys. <laughs> so I hope you guys um, will enjoy this tutorial. Um, so stay tuned if you want to see how to do this look. Okay, so I've already blocked my eyebrows out. Um, I'm not going to show you how to do it in this video because I mentioned, I mean, I say how to do it in previous videos in the past. So I will just put a link to one of those there on how to do that, okay? Right, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is um, section up my face. Um, that sounds weird. Um, like where I'm going to put the stitches. Uh, so I'm going to use an eyeliner pencil, this is a Grimace, cr car, it's a coal red, yeah, just because it wipes off really easily and red's probably the best colour to do it with anyway, so I'm just going to trace on the pattern that I want. So I'm going to have one eye that's completely, hopefully looking flawless and pretty and human basically, the rest of it's going to be random different colour patches of skin that are starting decaying and stuff like that. Okay, so when I'm happy with the lines that I've got, um, I can start on the next step, which will be applying the wax. So I'm wax. using Mayron Modeling Wax. It's like nose putty wax. It's the same wax I use to block out my eyebrows. And okay, I'm going to take a small amount of that on a spatula. I always use a spatula because it's just so easy to apply. Okay, so about that much. Not too much at all. Okay, so I'm just going to literally rub this over the red lines I've drawn. Okay, so now I've got the wax firmly stuck in place, I'm going to work on blending it outwards. So, I'll take my spatula, and I'm literally just going to taper off all the edges, and just make sure I've got a cloth in between, I'm just using a baby wipe, just so that all the edges are blended outwards. Okay, so once you're happy with the blending of the edges, um, you can use a toothpick or something like that, but I'm going to use my spatula to score down the centre of all of the red lines, okay, where the wax is. So, just if you're going to use something sharp, please be careful. <laughs> so, I'm literally going to go right down the centre. Like that, that. Right, so now I'm going to take some collodion. Uh, this is by Cryolan. It basically, I, it's the same method, same thing I use for my Joker makeup. Um, this will, once it goes on, when, as it dries, it tightens and puckers the skin. So this will make these scars look even darker, even deeper. Plus, um, I'm not only going to put them over the wax, I'm also going to put them around my mouth. Okay, So I'm going to apply a couple coats of that, letting them dry in between. Okay. Oh, and a little trick I picked up, um, if you were to hold, if you hold your eyelid a little bit down like this and cover underneath with the collodion quite heavily, if you hold it in place for a few seconds, when you let go, your eyes naturally pull down with the collodion. 
So after a couple of seconds, when you let go, it's very subtle, but it's one of those little effects that just can make a look sometimes. <laughs> okay. Plus, I'm going to be putting a lot of latex on top of the eyelid as well to make this eye look completely knackered. <laughs> Okay, so once that's all dry, um, I'm going to start on the foundation. So I'm going to start on the good, the pretty side first. <laughs> okay, pretty. <laughs> so I'm using a Crowden TV Pan Stick in 3W. Um, this is just like a really, really thick, thick concealer, and it's a really nice pale colour. Um, so I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use some foundation over the top of it just to make it look extra flawless. Okay, so when that's all blended, I can start on the foundation. So I'm going to be using uh, my MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC15. It's like a really, really light, really light foundation. Okay, so I'm just going to apply that all over the same area again. Okay, so this is the fun part. Right, so I'm going to be using several different colour foundations here. Um, I'm going to be using MAC, all, all MAC Studio Fix Fluid. But I'm using NC45, the NC15 I've already got on, and the NW35. Um, now it really, really, really does not matter what colours you use, guys. It's, I mean, the idea is you're meant to be someone that's sewn together from different people, so you're not going to have the same skin tone all over. So just get creative as you want. Really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm, I'm using these because these are the foundations I love, really. Um, but what I'm going to do is to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to be mixing in um, some Snazaru green watercolour just to make it look a bit more decayed. Um, so I've literally just got a tiny bit of water with that mix them up so it's like a paste if you can see that not really so I'm actually literally going to add about I don't know two to three drops of that to the watercolor so it's got like not to the watercolor to the foundation so it's got a couple of just that mildewy not mildewy going off type rotting flesh feel to it oh by the way the green that I'm using is Snazaru grass green if anyone wants to know what that is <laughs> okay so I'm going to start off with the I think the big area here um, so I'm going to use the NC15 again because I think the green will look more effective with that. I'm just going to add literally just a couple of drops, hardly any at all, because otherwise it will go very green. Okay, so you're left with this horrible, dead-looking, horrible, flat colour that's got a green tinge to it. Right, so I'm just going to apply that all over my this whole area, stopping at the edge. Um, I've just stopped there for a second because I've just realised, I mean, I can't just do the face. I think I need to have something else on the body. So I'm just literally going to do the wax again, just on my neck, in this pattern because that's the thing that pattern that had in the bottom carter as I mean in that version. I'm just drawing a couple of random lines there just to yeah tie it in. <laughs> so I'm just gonna quickly do the same process I did on here and put some wax then collodion. Okay so I just quickly finished it off with some wax. I'll blend it better in a bit but for now I'll just focus on the colouring. So I've just coloured in my neck with the same colour I've used on my chin. Okay and now I'm gonna do the same thing with the mixture with the NC or NW35. Okay, and I'm going to do that, I think, on this part here. So I'm going to mix, yeah, this with about two to three drops of the green. Okay, and I also put some of that there as well. Right, and now so I'm going to use the NC45 with the three drops of green. Okay, so before I can do this part of my eye here, I need to use some liquid latex. So I'm going to take a small sponge I've cut up into a little square, and a small amount of latex, I'm just going to close my eyes, and you've got to be really careful on this step. You don't have to do it, but I just think it will add some real... It will just add something to the look really well. But the idea is, when I layer this onto the eye, as it dries, this eye will get heavier and heavier to the point where it's just... Yeah, creepy looking. So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to dab this on my eye, being really careful not to get it in my eye, okay? Okay, so I did about four to five coats of latex on there. It's still drying now. But even though it's not fully dried, you can still see the effect that it will give. Okay? Really droopy eye. <laughs> okay, so, whilst that's drying, I think I'm going to add some latex to this part here as well, just to add an extra bit of texture. I'm also going to do up here as well. Well, whilst that's drying, I can do the next step anyway. So, um, that's the stitches. So, I'm going to be taking some regular black thread, and I want it to be really, really little, so... If I make them about that long, you can't see that. Okay, so half an inch, if that. Okay, so we cut tiny little pieces off like that. And I'm going to be sticking these down with the spirit gum, the same spirit gum that I used on my eyebrows. It's by Mayrum. 
be, uh, loads of people make this, so you can get it in most party shops. So the idea is I put two little tiny globs of the spirit gum, either side of the scar. I'm going to have to use tweezers for this because it's really fiddly. And you just press, whoop, just press it down like that. And you can't really see that, but you'll see when, the more you do on camera, you'll see more. You'll see it better, rather. <laughs> In case you start getting this cool stitchy effect, hopefully you can see that. <laughs> right, so now I'm going to take um, my Cryolan Bruise Wheel and uh, what's it called? Number zero nine six. This one, just because it has a really really nice cream red and a really nice cream bluey purple colour. Now the idea is I'm going to take a really really small brush like that, and I'm just going to take some of the purpley colour. I'm just going to dab it right where the like a stitch starts on each one and then go over that with the red in case you should do something like that um, I completely forgot just putting the stitches on I completely forgot to even colour the stitch in so me being stupid um, so I've just took some of that purple and I've just quickly ran down over the top of the lines just to make it a little bit darker okay it doesn't really matter, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference going over the top of the stitches. Um, because as when I finish this, I'm going to go over it with a little tiny bit of blood anyway. So, Okay, so you can do that all along the edges where you've got both sides of colour done. Okay. Okay, so it just start looking like that. So I've just gone down all the scoring where I scored earlier with the wax. Okay, so I'm just going to carry on putting on some more of the stitches in the area where both sides are coloured. Um, just until this latex is fully dry and you can't see the white anymore. Okay, so I've got a lot of the stitching done. I've just, in random places, I've just double stitched. Just to make it look a bit random and, I don't know. Um, okay, so now that's dry... And um, I can go over this for colour. So I'm actually going to use one of the colours in the bruise wheel. I just realised there's a really nice yellowy, gross colour in there, which I'm going to use. So I'm just going to take a really, really, really flat brush. Ooh, that'll do it. And I'm just going to start applying that in the entire area, making sure to press on the eyebrow. Okay, remember, don't stroke. I'm just going to add a couple extra stitch lines above my eye, not with the wax or collodion, just with the red colour from the palette. Just go in, I don't know, just like that, just to, yeah, just to give something else in that area to make the eye, a reason for why the eye is like that. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with the stitches and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so once all the scars are done, it should start looking like that. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now I want to take some uh, fake blood. Um, this is this actual part. I think is a grimace blood part, but I filled it with my own. What is it? I've never used it all up now, but my own blood mixture. Um, not literally. <laughs> um, I make my own blood with like honey and corn syrup and red and blue and green food coloring and uh, corn flour rather, and yeah, just mixed together and yeah. Basically, but you, there's so many different different recipes for blood. I mean, the reason I do that is because if I ever want to put blood in the mouth. Um, it's edible, so yeah. So I'm just going to apply a tiny bit of that just to the back of my hand. Mm -hmm. so I think I've got a little bit more control of it this way because I think if I apply it straight from the applicator, I'm worried that I'll apply too much because I really don't want to use that much. It's just not for overkill, it's just to complete the look, really. I'm just going to go randomly in the scars, in the stitches, not too much. Every now and again, I'll apply a lot so it can dribble down a little bit, but. Only round, only a couple of times. Now, to be honest, you could probably stop here and call yourself a zombie. Yeah, but that's a different tutorial for another day. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to start on the eyebrow. Now I'm going to draw one eyebrow on, and I'm going to do the um, like the stereotypical. Uh, Bride of Frank has done that, the original with the whole swept up eyebrow. Okay, so I'm going to use Snazzery Black Watercolour and I'm going to use a really strong angle brush. Okay, so the shape that I'm going to do is going to be actually over my eyebrow, 
not too high but not too low it's going to be like in the middle of it and I'm just going to start right down here okay and then just go straight across and then up okay so just like that okay so now I'm going to take um, mediumish eyelash if you can see that okay and I'm just going to apply that to the top of my eyelid okay not the top of my eyelid, my lash line rather. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so whilst that's drying, I'm going to do the lips. Now I'm using a Barry M um, number 37 black lipstick for this. This is I just love this. It's just any kind of black cream will do it, but this this is just so thick when it goes on, it's lovely. So the lip shape we're going for is quite full. It's particularly on the Cupid's bow bit, really, really like rounded. Okay. Okay, so a really nice full lip. Mwah. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okay, and I just applied a bit of full si um, a bit of mascara to the full side lash. Just a bulk standard mascara, not too much, just to bond the two together. And I applied a black contact lens in this eye and a white out contact lens in that eye, just to add to the effect. <laughs> and um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Just got to apply my wig, and that's it. That's my tutorial. Um, I've pulled the wig back because I think she's supposed to have a big head, isn't she? She's, I mean, the idea is the, the large forehead and that, so, yeah. <laughs> um, kind of went off on a tangent. This is what happens when I don't plan a tutorial. <laughs> but, fairly effective. As I said, you don't have to, I mean, you could just stop at the eyebrow and the eyelash and the wig. Just don't do those bits and you've got yourself a zombie. <laughs> I was going to go and get myself a costume, but then I just thought, it's kind of just like a necklace and... It kind of just works like that for me, I think. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you some ideas as to what to be for Halloween, maybe. Also, since in my video before last, where I was talking about my Facebook page, um, so many more of you have found your way to it and liked it. So thank you so much. Because um, then I can communicate to you a lot better. It's a lot easier than communicating through YouTube, because not everyone sees the messages and such. Um, plus, you also get to take part in the Name That Character not competition, it's like name that character and you get a shout out in my next video. <laughs> um, so speaking of which, um, I kind of skipped the video before, I'm really sorry I forgot to mention um, that basically the previous picture I posted was of the My Magenta look and the person who guessed correctly was Nadine, so hello Nadine, <laughs> well done. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'll be posting this picture in shortly so hopefully you guys will guess what this look is inspired by and you'll win a shout out in my video after that. <laughs> I also have a shout out to, I have to backdate these shout outs now because I missed the video before, <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I also need to give a shout out to Charlie, hello, <laughs> um, I'll put her YouTube name here, um, and she guessed my um, geisha inspired look, she guessed what the theme was, so well done, yay! <laughs> but um, yeah, so thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching, um, until next time, bye!